number on the game priority. So hopefully you've all read the um, game priority. So their player safety, game fundamentals, positive set phases, the breakdown, uh, management and communication. Those are the uh, five that we're hitting this year. And so this one's um, D, which is the, the breakdown. Um, and so I guess the, the key around this is that uh, we're just applying the current laws more strictly. There's no new laws or anything like that. It's just applying the current laws more strictly. So the key focuses of that are uh, uh, ball carriers will only be allowed one dynamic movement. And so the video should show that. And they were using that type of language on Saturday and Sunday. Um, crawling or any secondary movement other than placing will be penalised. There's some videos on that. Tacklers will be expected to roll away immediately in the direction of the sideline. So previously we've talked about the east-west, but rolling towards the sidelines easy to get in the context of a um, rugby field. And that's the referee's number one priority. And there'll be an extra focus on the offside line with um, defenders expected to clearly be onside. Um, on the stuff that Cam sent through, there's a good discussion between Bryce and Paul Williams at Super Rugby about that one there, uh, the breakdown briefing. Um, so having done that, that's what will be this presentation, but better. Um, so, <laughs> first, first up we'll do tackler, even though it says ball carry here, the most important, that we, the first thing that we worry about is the tackler. Um, so, just before we have a look, um, remembering that tacklers must roll east to west, or to the sidelines, um, otherwise they impede the attacker's ability to um, attack the ball, really. Um, so it's their responsibility to get out, and if they can't, they will, will be penalised. Um, so, to reward the jackler, the tackler must not impede the clean out. So, that's what we're looking at. So, take us away, Cam. Yeah, and, sound, so. yeah, and we're not stopping these and going through again. We'll just go through once. They'll. Oh, there is sound for that. Okay. You'll, you'll see it come up and slow it down for what's happening. And we're not analysing what the referees call because some of them they're calling the opposite thing that happened, so we're not worrying about that, just a picture. Cool, so <laughs> you've got those, so remember you've been setting these out so you can watch them again, but so the, the key focus is the tackler first, so some of those ones the jackler actually got on the ball because the tackler was in the way, um, that was slow, sliding the face down. Um, so the next thing we're looking at is the ball carrier, um, so ball carriers like we said earlier are allowed one dynamic movement um, for they can place or pass the ball. Um, if they're clearly held, they can't crawl forward once hitting the ground, even if the tackler has let them go. So there's some clips on that now. We see that one quite a bit. Yeah. Oh, spot on with those ones. Okay, so the next. Sorry. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, around the dynamic movement. So, that's um, 
a place or a put between your legs. It's not a roll over it again. It's not a roll on top of it or anything like that. Just one placement or a clear movement, like a pass or something like that. Um, anything like that to that? And yeah, just, just the movement can be here in the position to pull yeah. up. So it can be to lift it over, you'll go over it, but not more than one. Sweet. Um, so talking about the assist tackler now. So the assist tackler must clearly release the ball carrier, um, get back to their feet, um, support their own body weight before and support their own body weight before contesting the ball. Um, the assist tackler must show a clear release and clear separation, but we don't need a clap or a massive hands in the air as long as there's a clear release and clear separation. So there's some examples in there. So the, the next ones that we're doing is the jackler. So in order to be rewarded, the jackler must arrive first um, and they must be in a position where they're supporting their own body weight and show a clear lift of the ball um, with their hands. So if they are not first or they lose their feet, they need to roll out straight away. Um, and going past the ball and then coming back onto the ball is not allowed. So that's quite a common tactic. So they can't be, I guess, grabbing onto the player and the ball in front, they need to be on the ball like they have, I guess it's kind of like a but for thing, but for that player coming and getting them, they would have got the ball. So if they're in a position that there's no way that they'd ever win the ball in that position, then uh, we're not rewarding them for that play, they need to be um, playing positive. And so like we said before, in order to reward the jackler for getting their quick we need to make sure that the tackler um, isn't impeding the clean out. Does everybody know you know what a tackler is? Anybody not know what a tackler is? Trying to get the turnover. Mm -hmm. So that's what he is. You know, I'm just stopping here just so I can build upon that conversation. So in this case, it's Craig Kevin um, on the ground. And near the jacket, in the first one there, I mean, this, in this case, there, you know, the, the double shot will be off the top of your feet. So I think that's really good at supposed jacket. Mm The key for these ones, and you may have or may not have picked it up on Saturday and Sunday, is that there's no such thing as needing to survive the clean out or anything like that, like there potentially was before. So if a player has his or her hands on the ball and they're in a position where they would be able to pick it up and go and they get cleaned out, then we should be rewarding that player for getting on the ball. And you probably saw that um, a few times on Saturday and Sunday, and so that's and so that. The penalties, especially from what we've usually seen, seem a little bit questionable to you. Like, oh, they barely, barely got their hands on the ball, but as long as we're confident, and it means that we have to be there to see that, because often that happens quicker than a lot of us get to the breakdown, and so we miss that. 
Um, but if they're, and, and you're 100% certain that they had their hands on the ball, and if they hadn't got hit, they would have got the ball up, provided that it had been released and everything like that, then we need to be rewarding that play. That's what we're looking for here, really. Um, so that's the uh, clips with the any... Oh, sorry, arriving attackers, I skipped one. Um, so arriving attackers need to come through the gate. Mm -hmm. Um, on obviously their side of the ball with their bums facing um, between their own corner flags um, and they, I guess what we've been seeing recently is they can't be um, sealing or killing the contest um, and so also as part of this like mentioned down the bottom, tackling the jackler's legs um, will be deemed dangerous play so you can't be chopping the jackler's legs, um, you have to drive the body um, and coming through from your own side, not from the side and taking out their body. So we see a few clips of um, arriving attackers. Okay, so those clips are all there on the email for you to look at more times if you want to. I think especially the arriving tacklers um, is a good one because you'll, you'll probably, well, hopefully not anymore, but um, every other weekend you'd see stuff like that. And sometimes it's rewarded um, rather than persuaded. So apart from that, that's I guess the, the clips that I've gone through. Um, and there's more explanation of it on the video, but we just, does anyone have any questions about any of those? We all hopefully have seen them. Um, does anything not make sense? I think the whole, I guess before I jump into the question, the whole reason for doing these is to um, make it cleaner and faster and a better contest and that we're not looking at players diving in. That's not a good looking contest, even though um, commentators on TV and um, rugby purists think that um, that's what a contest is really about, is just diving head first into another person head first. Um, it's about, I guess, a contest of skill um, at the breakdown, and that's what we're trying to reward. Skillful, um, quick, strong positions, um, good technique, that's what we're trying to reward and trying to get the ball moving quickly. That's the whole the whole aim of this. Um, yeah, any questions on any of that? I know it was quite a quick run through it's a bit of an introduction if you haven't seen it and we'll be touching on these throughout um, the year but mm -hmm. I guess it, we're just trying to introduce them. So what we can do Sam is um, just with the people around you just for two minutes um, so three, three or four people around you just uh, pick out if you do have any questions just bring them up within your group if your group has any questions um, but also if you don't have any questions maybe just pick out what's one thing that really resonates with you like one thing that you're like yeah sweet that's something that I've noticed a lot or I'm going to relook out that on Saturday. So just with people around you, threes or fours, any questions you might have within the group? The other thing that's kind of that'll be interesting here, um, if you haven't got any questions that come out of that, just any observations you made specific to the weekend's games that you saw, because I'd be really interested to see what, like, overall what, what, what you thought of what you saw in terms of the Super Rugby game. So just, uh, So next week there is no meeting, there's, we'll still do 
do the training. However, there's going to be rugby smart practical for those who haven't completed it yet. Um, so particularly for those, uh, for example, if you haven't done rugby smart practical and, and online and for senior blue card as well, you can't get one of the game. So um, for those who have indicated that they are going to be doing it um, on Monday, then they've been, and they've done everything else, then they've been up about for appointments for this week. Um, So we'll, yeah, so just look out for emails from me around that. Um, and in the following week, we're looking to tee up getting out to a club. So we'll look at uh, something like a time or a or something like that. Um, we'll pick out which night we're going to do it. So it's, not, it's going to be a Tuesday or a, or a Thursday night, because uh, obviously that's a big with the team. And we'll, yeah, we'll be doing, we're going to frame out exactly what we're going to do, but it'll be probably around uh, scrum and we'll break down um, stuff. So um, yeah, look out for some more info around that, but just be aware that it will be a different night to. Uh, Yeah. Uh, did you want to talk to me or? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, who has not yet switched out their white jersey? Yeah, who was 